Yo, what is up guys, Ultraball's back with a uh, another narration on Doc's channel. It's been a while since I've been here, but uh, glad to be back. Uh, today we have a game between Poek and Level 56 for the Smogon Championship. Uh, this is round one, uh, best of three, this is game one. And I'm pretty sure that the uh, future games and the other games in this series are getting recorded. Not by me, I think maybe BTB is doing one, I think Doc said, so be on the lookout. I know you all love BTB, uh, he's the GOAT. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'll go quickly because I don't think there's been any of these uh, replays uploaded yet to Doc's channel. So I'll go over what Smogon Championship is a little bit before we get into the replay, just so you guys understand the tour. Uh, so Smogon, um, the Smogon Championship is a new tournament this year. And what it does is take the, uh, the best players throughout this entire past year and puts them into one tournament. So based on the results... Uh, from all the other big smoke on tournaments, uh, they take I think it's the top 16 players overall from the whole year and put them into this final tournament at the end of the year, kind of like the best of the best players, which is really cool. First year they did this, um, and I find it really interesting. And so they play best of threes uh, all the way down to the, the finals. Uh, so yeah, game one here is um, Ubers. I'm pretty sure each player gets to pick one tier. I think the third one has to be Sun Moon OU, but don't quote me on that. But I do know for sure that out of the best of three, each player does get to pick the one tier that they want to play. That I know for sure. So the first game here that we're seeing is Ubers. Uh, quickly look at the teams. Uh, they look very similar. I mean, they have well five of the same mons. I'm assuming the RC's forms are different, though, just because on... Um, on level 56 side, we see a Giratina O, and then on Poke side, we have a Xerneas, which is the only, like, different Mon. But the thing is, like, um, so that means for me, me looking at the teams right now, level 56 is, uh, Arceus has to be Fairy. Um, otherwise, like, he has, he's super weak to Dark. Like, Eveltal would rail him if that's not Arc Fairy. So I feel like it, it is definitely Arc Fairy on his side. Um, and then on Poke side, it could be any sort of support Arceus, is what I assume. I don't know exactly which one yet. Uh, I think, like, yeah, I don't know. We'll see when it comes out. But um, definitely on levels side, it should be uh, Arc Fairy. So yeah, we'll see right here on the leads. We see Zygarde versus Veltal. Um, and level 56 is not going to want to stay in here because Specs Dark Balls will hurt this thing really badly. Um, if it is Specs, uh, it, Veltal could run uh, so many different sets. I love It's one of my favorite Ubers mons for sure. I love Veltal. But yeah, so I think... If it is Arc Fairy, which like I'm nearly 100% sure it should be, that's what's going to be coming out right now. But yeah, we'll hop right into the replay. So we do see level 56 reveal the Arc the Arc Fairy, and Poke will probably just go into Gengar here. That seems to be the safe. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Puts the most pressure on Level's team, and we just see a Sludge Wave come out, um, and the Zygarde eats it up um, pretty well. Uh, we see what the Zygarde does on the Zern that comes out. He glares. So now I think we could switch out here to maybe his Dusk Main Necrozma. But we see sub, and what that tells me is that this Zygarde has to be fast. So probably fast DD because he wouldn't if if he wasn't fast enough. He even with the paralysis, if he wasn't running speed on the Zygarde, he could he would still get outsped. I'm pretty sure by like a Scarf Xerneas, and he wouldn't have risked that. So I'm pretty sure the reason why he subbed is because he knew he would be faster, even if it was Scarf. And we are gonna see. Okay, so we do see the Dragon Dance. Yeah, so it's probably some sort of like max speed, maybe add a max speed Zygarde. Uh, I mean, most I think the most common set on like Zygarde complete would be like Fizz Def, but uh, Dragon Dance sets are really scary too, just because of how bulky Dad uh, Dad is. But um, yeah, uh, this Arc Water is definitely his Zygarde check. The problem is now that it's Parad, um, it's not super reliable, of course. Uh, so yeah, he goes Gengar and Poek here. He's like, he has like a free um, Eveltal if he wants to go to it. Uh, so. But either way, I think that uh, Level's going to want to get the Mega off to get his Shadow Tag activated, that busted ass ability. And he could just throw off like a Hex if he has that, or if he has like Shadow Ball. Um, I think he just throws off Ghost Move because uh, we actually see uh, Poke going to Groudon. Um, probably, maybe because he wants to get Rocks up or something. Uh, wants to like put. Felt like that was better for his team because, like, if he goes into Eveltal, the problem with going Eveltal there is that it invites in the Arc Fairy. And then. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think no, I think Eveltal would have been fine there because if he goes Arc Fairy, you could just U turn into Gengar uh, if he's choiced. Um, but yeah, Poek here throws off the overheat onto the Giratina. Oh, that does so much damage. Uh, special, like, our mixed Groudons, uh, like, that, that set has been super popular. Like, it's just so good. It, it's impossible to switch into Groudon at, at the moment because it could run so much shit. Like,. God damn, this mod's just super good. I mean, between, like, uh, press blades and then rock move and then, like, HP ice for, like, ments and stuff like that, overheat, 
Uh, it could just do, like, everything. It could do everything. It's so good. But yeah, this Garatina, I would assume, like, Poex plays here. I, I would assume Zern is, like, a fine play because... It, we already saw that the Xerneas does have Aromatherapy, so if Garatina wants to go for like a Toxic or something, or like a Wisp, um, the Xerneas could just Aromatherapy it off, and then that also will get the Aromatherapy off on the on the uh, Arceus Water, which would be cool too. Um, the only thing that uh, Xerneas, and it obviously covers Dragon Move too, the only thing it doesn't cover is Ghost Move, so knowing that... Um, yeah, I guess if I'm level, going for Ghost Move would make the most sense then, because it gets, it's like, the if if you do anything else to the incoming Xerneas, it's kind of like a dead turn. But if you uh, Shadow Ball it, you're getting a good chip. Um, and yeah, I think we have no timer on this game, so that kind of sucks, because uh, we're probably going to have some turns here where I'm just going to have to sit here and, like, uh, just ramble. But yeah, so, okay, yeah, so level does make the play that I thought he would, which is Shadow Ball like the Zern coming in, but Poet goes Eveltal, predicting Ghost Move. Great play uh, on his part. And Eveltal also, I mean, it doesn't cover, like, Toxic that well, because if rocks go up, like, Eveltal, if if you ever trap the Arc Fairy with um, with Gengar, like, Eveltal becomes nearly unbeatable. So, I feel like you don't want this to get Toxic or, like, status in any way, because if rocks go up, it's going to have, like, limited switch-ins, especially because the, uh, the RC is just parrot, so it's not going to be able to defog, like, super reliably. Uh, but, yeah, here now, like, this is where it levels in a terrible position, because this one switch into Dark Pulse is Arc Fairy, but if this is, like, some sort of, because we don't see Leftover, so it's probably not Defensive Eveltal, so if it is some sort of choice Eveltal, which, um... I think it probably could be, like, either the Xerneas is scarfed or the Eveltal scarfed. Um, but either way, like, if it's if it's uh, choice Eveltal, they almost always run, like, U-turn. So if they go, like, especially Scarf always runs U-turn. So if you go into, like, um, Arc Fairy on a U-turn, you just lose it right away to, to Gengar. And then Eveltal becomes a huge problem. Because, yeah, so, like, um, even if the Arc Fairy does have Earth Power, that doesn't kill um, Gengar, and, like, not even close. I think it does, like, 70. So, and you would easily get to a KO'd. So, this is like a really tough turn for level. Um, yeah, and it, like Poek, he know he obviously knows that uh, like you turning on the Arc Fairy would be so good for him that he might just stay in in Dark Pulse, um, which wouldn't be a bad play either because yeah, like I don't think that level would let the Arc Fairy get trapped this early. So. But yeah, sh uh, Shadow Tag showing why it's super busted and why it always puts like the player with Shadow Tag or like Arena Trap in OU, like any sort of trapping ability, it just puts the the person who has the trapper in such a good position. Like they're always at the advantage. And I've talked about this before in my other videos, and I just hate it. And it's really cool. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but right. So recently, Ubers has decided that they're going to start doing more suspects and become more of like. Um, even more of a tier than just like a ban list for OU, which I mean that started with the ban of Mega Rayquaza, but they haven't really done much since then. They banned like uh, Baton Pass, but they're talking now about actually doing suspects on a lot of things, and um, I'll talk about that more after we see. Yeah, we do see the Dark Pulse come out, and obviously um, Level was expecting the U-turn on his Arc Fairy, uh, and Poek makes a good play just Dark Pulsing, so it takes care of the, Gir the Giratina. So there's the Defog out of the way. Um, for, or I'm assuming that it was Defog Giratina. We didn't know that for sure, but most of them are. Uh, yeah, so Level loses his Hazard Control, most likely. But yeah, talking about this, so there, Ubers is becoming, is trying to regulate the tier more, which I am a really big fan of. And I think the first thing that they have on their slate is Shadow Tag, which, amazing. Get that thing out. That, that, that does not belong in competitive Pokemon at all. Uh, so I, I'm really happy about that change that they're going to be doing, or they're talking about doing. Uh, it'd be, I think, great idea on their parts uh the leaders of that tier so yeah uh soak this in because you might not be seeing mega gengar for too much longer um yeah i think poek here like this is still a bad spot because if poek goes gengar and you don't earth power you lose your arceus um yeah and we do see poek do go hard gengar as he just rocks so th this play i actually i can't get behind this play because if you were just going to rocks and let yourself get trapped anyway, I feel like at that point you should have just gone hard. Like you said, at this point you've you've sacked your Giratina for no reason because you just let your Arceus get trapped anyway. You know what I mean? So like, because if you would have went Arc Fairy on a U-turn, 
uh, from the Eveltal, he still would have had the chance to get rock he still would have gotten rocks up anyway and died. So he'd be in the same position, but he would still have his um he would still have a sixty percent uh Giratina. So I don't necessarily agree with that series of plays. I feel like he just threw out Giratina for no reason if he was prepared to sack his RCs anyway. Um but yeah, Groudon comes out now and I think Poex's best play is like Eveltal. Um but even that is like super risky because I don't think you want to do that. Because if, if Groudon has fire move, it's going to click it here because it cooks the Avelta, also cooks the Gengar. And yeah, I would definitely, I think you just sack this because this did its job trapping the Art Fairy. Uh, and this loses to, the, it, this loses to Groudon, it loses to Zygarde. And the only thing it would beat, which would be nice, would be the um, the Necrozma, the the Dawnwings or what is it? Dusk Dawnwing, the Dusk Mane. But uh, I don't think that matters too much because um, like it has Prism Armor anyway, so I'm pretty sure it would just live a hit and kill the Gengar anyway. So yeah, we do see Taunt and to prevent some setup, like in case we wanted the SD or whatever, and then it just dies to a Fire Punch. So yeah, obviously like a Hardy Veltal was never a play there. Um, so yeah, I think I agree with the sack there. That was a good play on Poek's part. See Moonblast. Hold, that did... What the fuck? <laughs> that did so much damage. Holy shit. Yeah, definitely Spec Zern. That's 100% Spec Zern, which to me is going to confirm that the, um... That the Veltal is most likely Scarfed. Uh, which is what I uh, kind of thought originally. Yeah, I didn't think this was necessarily Specs. This still could have been some sort of Geomancy, but... Based on that damage, that d has to be Specs. That's doing so much. Um, and it's also an offensive Groudon. Because, like, Spadef Groudon uh, takes only, like, 20 from normal Zern Moonblast. And takes, like, 30 from Specs Zern. So, the fact that it's doing 50 means that it's Specs Zern plus offensive Groudon. And we're probably just going to see that sacked off now that it's only at 4%. Um, I mean, Poek didn't really have anything to go into on this Groudon. That's why he had to pretty much just sack the Xerneas to weaken it. Because, yeah, the, he had no switch-ins because the Arceus was paralyzed. So it just spams, like, press blades. Um, yeah, so now the Zygarde uh, is able to come in here on the Veltal. And I think what he's going to want to... I think what Level's going to try and do is get off his Papa form. Uh, yeah, and this... Like, if he loses the Aveltal... If he loses the Aveltal, this becomes a huge problem. Uh, also, though, if... Like, Zygarde is able to Dragon Dance up twice, it's faster than the Aveltal. And, um, at that point... He's gonna be able to kill it with Thousand Arrows anyway. But, like, he would be able to foul play for... The Zygarde for a decent amount of damage if it's only at plus one. So, he wants to probably keep that around for last... And, and it's still good, because it's still Dark Pulse is in kills, like, the other two members of, uh, Level's team. So he goes into the Arc Water, and uh, I think one play that, honestly, a level could do here is just go hard into Gengar, because you know 100% the Ice Beam's coming out right now to, um, yeah, so, like, Ice Beam was 100% uh, was Poke's play, because he needed to break the sub, so at that point, I feel like you could have almost went hard Gengar, and then, um, you get, you trap the, the Arceus, and you get to kill it with two hexes, and then that makes Zygarde an even bigger threat. So I think that was definitely an option there. Uh, instead, he Dragon Dances, which, like, I feel like Dragon Dance wasn't really worth it, because I guess you're just banking on Paras. Um, if anything, I would have just dried Thousand Arrows. If you, if you, if his goal is just to get his uh, Father form, which is, I'm assuming, what he's doing now, he's subbing down to get uh, Big Daddy Papa Zygarde. Uh, if that was his idea, I don't think he needed to Dragon Dance. I think he could have just used that turn to get out some chip with a thousand arrows. Because he's going to be, as soon as, um, as soon as he gets Papa form, he's going to be forced out anyway by Ice Beam, of course. So, yeah, I, so, like, I don't really get, I don't think the Dragon Dance accomplished much, unless he was, like, fishing for some Paras, which, I mean, it's a nice, respectable strat. Um, there's a reason why you use Glare, and that's to get full Paras. So... But yeah, I think uh, this is yeah. We see sub, and I, like I said, that that's why he didn't go hard Gengar before, is because he wanted to activate his um. He wanted to activate Power Construct first. Yeah, I hate this mod. Like this, like the re like. There's no reason to make this stupid piece of shit. <laughs> this busted ass mod. Um. But yeah, I think now he could go Gengar on Ice. B yeah, exactly. And now Arceus is trapped, and now uh, Pollock just lost his uh, Zygar check. Nice and balanced Shadow Tag from both sides. So yeah, I mean, I was talking before about how bad level situation was because uh, Poek had the shadow tag, but let's be honest, they both got the broken shit here, so you can't uh, feel too bad for him. Um, 
of course, I'm not saying, like, they're... I'm not, like, please, if you're watching this, don't think I'm calling them scum for using Gengar. It's an amazing mon. And, like, of course, if it's in the tier, you should use it, because it's stupid good. But I'm just saying, for the health of a tier, like, I don't like this sort of mechanic in the game, so that's why I'm glad they're getting rid of it eventually. Uh, but, yeah, you're going to see another Hex here from the Gengar. Kill the Arceus. And as long as it doesn't get parried, like, this is obviously going to be the Arceus 1v1, unless it gets just hexed to shit. But then I think that puts, like, Poek in a rough spot, right? So, if Poek goes, um, if Poek goes Groudon afterwards, that's free setup fodder for Zygarde. And if he goes, um, Eveltal, I'm pretty sure that's also free setup to Zygarde, but I'm not positive about that. Like, um, I guess if he locks onto Dark Pulse, could that work? Could that win the game, lock into Dark Pulse? I don't think it does. I think if you lock into Dark Pulse, Zygarde wins, because it just, um... It could just thousand arrows you, and then it beats the other two mons like super uh, reliably. At least to me, I'm pretty sure. That, yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. So I feel like going like I feel like going Yveltal is not the play, and going Groudon is definitely not the play. But like going Necro seems weird, right? Because you could just hex you. But the thing is, like it's hex and it's not boosted because it's not uh, statused, and also you have pris Prism Armor. So I feel like you could go to the Necro to the to the Dusk Main right now. Which yeah, it kind of seems like the like the the odd choice because it's the one mon that's like weak to Gengar. But I do think that's the play because it's the only thing that doesn't let you uh, that doesn't let the Zygarde come and set up. If that is assuming that it's some sort of like SD, it could even be Ultra Necrozma. I'm not sure, but if it like because but if it's like Spadef, then which is another set. Like if it's like Spadef Rocks on Poex side, then that doesn't make any sense to go to that either. Uh, but if it is put up rocks, I'm pretty sure he just loses if he doesn't Dark Pulse flinch. But yeah, I, I mean, Poek's thinking about it here, so I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have a good play into this. But if it is like an offensive uh, Necro, which a lot of them are. It, it, like, I've seen the Ultra Form, but I've also just seen regular, uh, like, regular uh, main, Dusk Main Necrozma with SD, like, 3 attacks or Double Dance 2 attacks. Uh, they're both options. So, like, if he is one of those offensive sets, I feel like that is the play. If he's not, I think it's go Veltal and Dark Pulse through everything, which I think would involve at least one flinch on the Zygarde, now that it's gotten Papa form. Um, yeah, because it's Scarf, so it's not even going to do that much to it. I mean, the thing has, like, 600 uh, hit points, so... <laughs> and it still has, like, 100 Spadef. It's such a stupid-ass mon, oh my god. And people are wasting some time here doing some random random Pokemon here on the side. Um, yeah, I don't get why timer's not on because like this is what I was afraid of before. I'm not gonna have stuff to, to talk to you about, so I'm gonna be just sitting here making a fool out of myself until these guys make some plays. But I understand it's a really hard situation for Poex, so uh, he's gonna think it through. And they probably agree no timer before the match, so respectable. Um, yeah, not much more to say about this, though. Oh, that's a nice little uh, little cup team you got there. Nice Happiny. It's like the worst. Happiny's so bad. You know, Happiny doesn't get, like, any of the moves that Chansey or Blissey get. Like, it's literally dog shit. It doesn't do anything. It's like, yeah. And Kaden, nice Unmon. Oddish, nice Unmon. Dude, but Cor oh, Corfish and Snubble, those are two of my... Those are probably two of my, like, top three or four favorite little cup mons. Uh, I build with those a lot. There's There's super flames. Snubble, in general, is just amazing. Corfish is... Not amazing, but it just flames. I love that mom because like it hits like a truck. Um, but yeah, definitely not like top tier by any means. All right, come on, Poek man. He's running all the calcs. Reminded me of my man Dennis the Menace right now, taking about five minutes per turn. Um, that's Dennis's specialty. Even if he's on ladder, that man will take. He will run the clock down to 10 seconds before every turn. Um, yeah, shout out to Dennis if you're watching. Uh, you probably don't watch these. Uh, you're probably too good for Doc, though. You probably like to stick to the Pokey Aim videos. Uh, I see how it is. This has been a cool game, though, so far. Like, um, I haven't played Ubers too much since Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon release. I played a decent amount, though, in uh, in Sun Moon. So I had a pretty good grasp of the tier. And I don't know how much um, 
the new stuff has changed the tier. Because like I said, I've only played a little bit since uh, the new games came out. I do know that uh, Duskmane is like automatically became one of the best mons in the tier, though. Um, and you can see, obviously, they both have it, so they're both abusing it right now. Um, but yeah, it's cool that Ubers had a bit of a shakeup. The problem that I always had with Ubers, though, is that the whole tier is so centered around uh, Pete on Xerneas that it just, like, it, the games could get, like, bored, or the tier could get boring to me because, like, a lot of builds turn out the same, um, and, like, you're so centralized around two mons that, like, I don't know, I think it restricts a lot. And that was actually one of the other things they are talking about, is after the Shadow Tag, like, they want to suspect Shadow Tag, right? And after that, they are talking about two other things, which was Geomancy and Pedon, which I think would be insane, because for how long have those two things been the staple of Ubers? Like, that's what defines the Ubers tier. And without it, like, without either one of them, it would change up the tier so much. But it would it would be exciting, I think, for me to see, that, see the Ubers without one of those things. So, But we'll see what will happen in the future. Yeah, so we see... Yeah, the, the, that was the best. Poeg made his best play for sure if he was SD. Because even unboosted Hex through Prism Armor wouldn't do that much anyway. And, like, the SD, in, he has a chance to get parried, etc. 100% I agree with Poke's play. That was 100% the right play. Uh, that sucks, though, for... Um, Definitely sucks for level that he got the para because if he was able to get off the hex, it might have been in range then of a, a thousand arrows. Like I don't know exactly the roles on this thing because, like I said, I haven't played the tier too much since this thing came out. But I know this thing is like fat as all hell and it has prism armor, so I don't even know if hex into a thousand arrows would kill it. But now uh, it, there's no way this shit is killing. There's a zero chance. So I think what um I think what level has to do now is yeah glare it. But then what is this? Oof. Yo, that's looking kind of clean. <laughs> Got the night nice sky in the background. I think just dropped in one. This is a busted as Z move. But yeah, so now I think level has to go off para, right? Yeah, level's going off the para, but doesn't get it. I'm actually, I don't know, is that a rule? Does that matter? Like, because, uh, no, that probably doesn't matter. I think it has like 150 attack, right? But like, prison arm, prism armor does do a lot, but not at plus two. It probably didn't matter at all. Um, yeah, no, there's no way that mattered. Um... Or, no, I, obviously this wasn't a crit. I mean a roll. Like, at first I thought it might be a roll because of Prism Armor. But I think that only makes super effective moves do, like, it does, it, they still do boosted damage. It's like 1.5 times instead of 2 times. So I'm pretty sure that, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a guaranteed kill anyway. And I think he had to go off the para. But I think, I'm pretty sure that if level got the para there, then he won. So... Yeah, it was actually a really interesting game. No, I think he still lost, though, right? Because doesn't he just lose to, like, foul play at that point? Yeah. So I don't think it really mattered. I think Poek had that from that point on. But yeah, Poek gets a little lucky there with getting the full pair on Gengar, letting this thing get the free plus two, which meant that Zygarde couldn't kill him, had to para him. And uh, yeah, but overall, it was, like, a pretty fun game. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of how, like, level played around with the, the Eveltal early, the, like, the Eveltal Mega Gar thing. Like I said, I felt like he kind of sacked his Giratina for not much, uh, reason, if he was gonna sack the Arc Fairy afterwards anyway. But, um, yeah, either way, this was a fun game. This was game one. Fun game, um, nice job to both players, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, BTB, like I said earlier, would be doing game two. So stay tuned to that for that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, leave my man Doc some juicy likes, comments, and, uh, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, all trolls out. Peace.